Fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Thursday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. This morning, I'm sure that you are very much aware that your ECG tariff will go up, water will go up, and then your fuel will also go up. It's part of the IMF deal which we have found ourselves in. That is what the government says, which we have found ourselves in. The government doesn't say which we have taken you into. But that's not the point. Yesterday, the Supreme Court made a unanimous decision. And so far, I've seen many different commentaries coming from many different people, some with a view that, well, this has been done before, some with a view that, well, it doesn't change anything, it's equalization and all of that. As a Ghanaian, I'm happy about one thing. I'm happy that this sets a good precedent and tells anybody not to go there. Because just yesterday, we were talking about the independence of the Electoral Commission, and I'd read to you what Professor Ransford Jampo had said about the independence of the Electoral Commission, and yet, actually, as if he knew that the Supreme Court was going to rule on this matter or decide on this matter, he had said that the president has gained the constant wrong image of trying to get into institutions that are supposed to be independent. The arguments were made that, oh, it had been written to everybody else, not just the Electoral Commission. But yesterday, the Supreme Court made it abundantly clear so that in anybody, in the fertile imagination of anybody's mind, they wouldn't say that, oh, that there's ambiguity, because the Supreme Court cannot bring ambiguity. They were clear that the decision of the president to meddle in the affairs of the audit service was unconstitutional. Two that to appoint an acting auditor general when the substantive auditor general eh, had not left office was also unconstitutional. A Jubilee House has plenty lawyers. The MPP itself has plenty lawyers. The government of the day has even many more lawyers. So when you find lawyers who have given all of us the impression in the past to be human rights lawyers, doing things that are contrary to the law, you must start asking questions. Whether there is a minor articulate motive that is shielding a major inarticulate motive. When a lawyer who is supposed to be lawful decides to be lawless, you ask yourself whether there is a minor articulate motive to shield or pave the way for, uh, what do you call it, an, an inarticulate major motive? You ask yourself that question. Because when Mr. Domelevo, no, pull up the, the letter that the board chairman wrote for me. And you see, the ir irony in this whole thing is that when the board chairman wrote and asked that Mr. Domelevo goes on his accumulated leave, and the likes of Vitus Azim, the likes of Sami Obeying, the likes of uh, Justice Abdullah, the likes of Ghana Integrity Initiative, the likes of Professor Akukwa Sari, many others, they were raising questions and concerns that this is a no-go area. The government did not listen. The presidency still went ahead after the board chairman wrote, all right? and then went ahead and actually wrote a letter through its, uh, well, the executive secretary and told Mr. Domelovo that they had seen the, the documents and they, th they thought that Mr. Domelovo should proceed on leave. Oh, yes. And when you speak, they say, oh, you're, you're, what you're saying is there are no facts, there are no this. But the documents I present here, the documents know they lie. If you are going to say what I'm saying is not factual, bring a counter document. You may not like what I say or how I say it. You may try to criticize it. That's fine. But until that time when you give me a counter document, I won't take you serious when you say what I'm saying is not factual. 
I would not. Now, on this occasion, when the president had written and literally endorsed what the board chairman had done, a few months down the line, he comes to say that board chairmen of state-owned enterprises should not meddle in the affairs of state-owned enterprises and the work of the CEOs and managing directors. You see the confusion that's happened? You see the confusion that happened? Now, I'm, I will repeat that point, saying that the president, after the board chairman wrote and said that Mr. Domeleva had to go on leave. I remember Professor Sari had raised questions and said that, look, even having the man's neat details out there was a problem, and that Shraj and, and other institutions should investigate. What happened? This is a letter dated the 9th of April, 2009, right? Accumulated leave of Mr. Diajima, and I'm taking you back because Mr. Diajima would later become the board chair. The records show that you have accumulated leave of approximately 264 days. I'm directed by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, John Evans Atta Mills, to request that you take the said leave with effect from Wednesday, April 15, 2009. His Excellency further directs that you hand over all matters relating to the Office of the Auditor General to Mr. Richard Quarty, Deputy Auditor General, who is by copy of this letter requested to act as Auditor General until further notice. His Excellency wishes you a well-deserved leave. J.K. Bebaku Mensah, Secretary to the President, is uh, addressed to Mr. Edward Diajima, who is now the board chairman, right? Or the board chairman who wrote to Mr. Dumelovo, copy to all these individuals. So this is the basis for the sudden equalization. Now, assuming without admitting that this was what was done and which now we know we've been told is wrong, because the wrong thing to have been done. At the time, nobody went to the Supreme Court. At the time when this man was asked to proceed on leave, I doubt if anybody changed the door locks to his office, as was done to Mr. Domelevo. At the time that he was asked to go on leave, we were busily being told by now President Akufuado in the past that Professor Mills is Professor Doolittle and that he is incompetent and with his bunch of Team A and Team B, they're incompetent. You remember that? John is right. Now, how is it that I am told to go on leave? I have an office. And then my office is handed over to another person. This is find the other letter for me. My office is taken over by another person. The door locks to my office are changed. An inventory, an exit inventory had not been done. Yet I am supposed to be held accountable for everything in my office. And yet I don't have access to my office. Under a human rights lawyer. Johnny's right. And Mr. Domelovo didn't miss words yesterday when he had that conversation with Alfredo Kanz. He said he worked in a toxic environment. The environment was toxic. He was careful of what he drank. He was careful of what he ate. He was even careful the kinds of conversations he had and the people he had the conversations with. Please pull up the other letter. Fantastic. 29 June 2020. Dear Auditor General, accumulated annual leave, Mr. Daniel Yaldomelevo. According to the records available to this office, you have accumulated annual leave of 123 working days. I am by this directed by the President of the Republic, Nana Adodankwe Kufuado, to request that you take your accumulated annual leave of 123 working days with effect from Wednesday, the 1st of July 2020. The President further directs that you hand over all matters relating to the Office of the Auditor General to Mr. Johnson Ikuyamoe Siedu, Deputy Director General, Deputy Auditor General, who by copy of this letter is requested to act as Auditor General until your return from leave, which now we have been told by the Supreme Court that it was unconstitutional. The President wishes you a well-deserved leave. Nana Bede to Asante, Secretary to the President, to uh, the address to Mr. Domelovo, the Vice President, the Chief of Staff, the Honorable Minister of Finance, the Chairperson of the Public Services Commission, the Head of Civil Services, also in copy in that, in that particular letter, and so on and so forth. Now, frankly speaking, if... Now, John C. Kramer is also copied in this one. Fra and frankly speaking, 
This is the justification that it was done in the past. So it's not being done. The question I ask is, is the NDC that was called super incompetent or incompetent, if you will, is the NDC now the standard? And the fact that you know that something is wrong and you go ahead and do it and say because it had been done before, it negates the whole wrong that I did. It doesn't make sense to me. What was Mr. Dumolevo trying to do? Play me the video of the president telling us how he would fight corruption. Play the video for me, please. Johnny's bite. State coffers are not spoiled for the party that wins an election, but resources for the country's social and economic development. I shall protect the public purse by insisting on value for money in all transactions. Public service is just that, service and not an, an avenue for making money. Money is to be made in the private sector, not the public, and measures will be put in place to ensure this. We must create wealth and restore happiness to our nation. We can only do this. Yeah, thank you very much. You have specifically mentioned corruption within the taxation system. What exactly will you do to stamp this out? The, the measures are going to be difficult, but there have to be a variety of them, a variety of them, uh, including what I consider, what I, con I, I, I call the NAS principle, um, setting up highly motivated professional groups of young people who will work, if you like, as it were, undercover to unearth examples of corruption wherever they can find it, and thereby allow the authority to deal with the issue. Because not only do you unearth the corruption, but you actually deal with it in terms of sending people to court, prosecuting them, hopefully the courts will cooperate and make sure that the offenders are, are, are found guilty and sanctions appropriately enforced. So a variety of measures, but a key one is the NAS principle, as well as, of course, what you do to do to securize those who are in the, in the tax collecting agencies. Uh, highest office of the land, the office of the president, should rather be seen as enforcing or complying with the laws of the land instead of being at the forefront of violating or breaching these laws. So that is what uh, disturbs me. But I am happy to say that never again do I think it will happen. Since the Supreme Court has decided on it, I am sure it will be upheld by this government and subsequent governments. So no Auditor General may face or suffer what I suffer. That is my happiness. From my point of view, it is an abuse of executive power, especially when it is expressly stated what must be done. Look, look, look. if you remember, the office of the president, even in responding to my position, stated that they were depending upon, uh, what do you call it, Section 30 of the Labor Act, which says every laborer or worker should take leave. But they didn't see Section 27, which said they should give the laborer or the worker at least 30 days' notice prior to the commencement of the leave. Because the office of the president knew that if they had given me 30 days, I would have gone to court to enjoin them. So they wanted to do everything possible that I could not have done anything uh, to stop their illegal action. Johnny's but bite. better late than never. Many people are worried that it is justice delayed and justice denied. I said, well, I think nobody knows that better than the Supreme Court judges. And so, number one, I shall protect the public purse, which Mr. Domelevo was doing. Because mind you, at the time, the $1 million crawl issue that involved the senior advisor to the president had been in the news. Right? It was a matter that we publicly knew that Mr. Domelevo was investigating. There was another which now, because we wanted an IMF deal, we had gone to do it. 
Because when those of us in the media, CSOs, were asking for a COVID-19 audit report, we were told that we are not finished fighting the virus and we could not be giving, and therefore we will not be giving the report. Chinese but IMF came and we gave IMF the report. It was a report that Mr. Domelevo was chasing. So number one, I shall protect the public purse. And now that has come into question. Number two, I shall use the ANAS principle. Where is the ANAS principle in all of this? Number three, Mr. Domelevo said the president should not be seen to be lawless. If that's the meaning of what he said. That he should be seen to be protecting the law enforcing the law and not to be abusing the law because what he went through is tantamount to executive abuse. Chinese Yesterday was the me level. The day after was electoral commission. Where else are we going? But I see, I will say again that I'm happy about this. What it means is that those within the NDC who are looking forward to say, oh, when we come, uh, there will be another uh, Charlotte or say part two on G Mensa. It may not happen Chinese. because there's precedent that you should maintain the independence of bodies that are independent. So, all those Dr. Piahini and the Hajia and everybody who had been put in the Electoral Commission, unless you make a very, very strong case, they're there permanently. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying what the streets are saying. So, yes, this decision has been taken as a precedent. Is that the minor audible motive to shield the major inaudible motive question? Yeah. It's not an allegation. But this should be a wake-up call to the president. That to the end that you ask board chairmen not to meddle in their affairs and the daily running of state-owned enterprises, you as the board chairman of all board chairmen in this country, must also not be seen to be meddling in the day-to-day -day affairs of institutions that are supposed to be independent, first of all. Not right. as a private citizen, but as the first gentleman of the land, as a human rights lawyer, a celebrated one at that, and the law reports are washed with your cases. So how we keep getting such basic law and basic adherence to the law wrong and flip-flopping, even from the presidency, is no longer a joke. Has the presidency been depraved? I don't know. Good morning.